Hello everyone, welcome back to my computer project. Uh, for the past week I've been working on some new boards, finally, and this is part of the sequencer. So this is the uh, what counts through the instruction cycle. Uh, so the control words, as you've seen before, I to do anything you have to do it in separate stages. And a group of those stages is an instruction. And in my design, there's only six. Uh, two are the same for all instructions. They're the uh, fetch and I don't know. But basically, I think it's just the fetch. I can't. I haven't got it in front of me, so I can't remember. But basically, uh, that's what the part that gets the instruction from memory, puts it in a thing, and then we can with that you can determine what the rest of the instruction is going to be, uh, what the other parts of the control world will be. Um, so this, these boards, there's three of them, they're exactly the same as the program counter, which counts up in binary, but they're actually wired up slightly differently in that, so like there'll be six of these and they'll count one after the other. So only one of them will be on at a time, and it'll go from, uh, it'll be like one, two, three, four, five, six. And each time it goes onto one of those, it will pull out another part of the instruction and execute that. Um, yeah, so it's not exactly the same design. I couldn't quite, I didn't, I couldn't be bothered to taking apart the ones I have to <laughs> work out the way I wired them up. So there's probably a bit more wire than necessary here because I just threw it together really quickly. Um, one thing I did do, different than the uh, program counter, is I put the LEDs on the side rather than in the middle, uh, just so you could see them. So when I was testing this, I, I tested the boards individually and they all worked. But when I was testing this, I just built a quick, um, a quick a stable multi vibrator here and it was a bit weird and I think that's just because this was a crap crap one um, it's not a proper square wave and it has very poor fan out so when it was trying to clock three boards it just didn't work so I don't think I've shown this before but this is my little a stable multi vibrator it's a tiny little thing on a 3d printed perf board yeah so this isn't swappable or anything, it was just a test. To, it was just a perf board test to test um, 3D printing them. But yeah, this, this one works. So I'm going to plug this one in. Uh, yeah, so the reason this one's different, this one's different than that one, is that this one has diodes and a slightly different setup so that it is actually a square wave. Um, anyway, uh, this goes to ground, this goes to 5 volts. And this is the clock wire. Right, so you see I've wired these up. So the bottom one here goes to the second one. The second one goes to the top one, and the top one goes back to the first one, the bottom one. So uh, I'll turn this on. Yeah, so you see we've got one LED on. If I put the clock to this, you see it counts for it. It's a very slow clock. Like I said, I can't. Uh, do anything with to change this but uh, I might actually make a proper multi vibrator thing just for testing at some point like with all the knobs and dials to actually get a decent signal out of it or get the signal I want out of it but yeah that's uh, that's that for now I need three more of these boards and like the program counter counter I'll need a board on top to reset it resetting is pretty simple because you just set the bottom ones to on and all the rest to off even though they're all set reset uh, flip flops, I yeah, I just did that because it's easier to copy them. Um, but yeah, only only the bottom one needs to be set, and all the other ones just need to be reset. Um, yeah, so I need a board on top to control that, and I think that's all I need, just to reset. Just um, yeah, I think that's all I need. I don't know, um, but yeah, that's all for that. There's a couple of other things I want to show you um, over on my computer itself. So, give me a second. So, uh, on my birthday, I got another multimeter to play with. Uh, this one's got a lot more bells and whistles than my last one. My last one was like five quid. This one's a bit more. But, um, yeah, it's got some interesting things that I actually wanted. Specifically, the temperature down here. And, yeah. So, the reason I wanted that was because I wanted to see how hot my uh, like this discrete power supply 
was because I know the transit the power transistors are using that are rated up to 150 degrees Celsius. When I measured it, it was 150 degrees Celsius going up to 160. So that's not good. Um, yeah, so I don't know what to do with that yet. So I'm because I'm stepping down um, 18 volts and uh, 18 volts to 12 volts, and I'm stepping down nine volts to five volts. So I'm wondering if I get a different transformer that's already closer to those to the ranges I want, that would help, um, or just completely completely redo the uh, power supply. Not sure. I'll try and pan over to the power supply. Yeah. So this this under here there's this top board I think, or it might be the bottom board. I think it's the bottom board that's the 12 volts, and the top board that's the uh, five volts and 12 volts is off at the moment, I'm not using it, and it's, you know, nothing. But yeah, actually they are both hot. Why are they both hot? That's the one's not even on. Yeah, the resistors get a bit hot as well, because it's got some big, chunky resistors on it. But yeah, that's very hot, and I'm going to have to work out something with that. Otherwise, let's get this back here. I found out something interesting about the clock. Um, so I thought it was... Uh, 1000 Hertz, 1 kilohertz, and I worked this out from a bit of guesstimation in the beginning using a slow clock, using some higher capacitors and a slow clock. I could work out how many hertz that was roughly, then I did it in the simulator, I built the same circuit in the simulator, and yeah it was about 8 hertz, and then I, when I doubled up, or when I halved the capacitance of these, the frequency doubled. I don't know where I went wrong, but I'll show you, because this one has hertz as well, I'll show you what frequency this clock is running at, because I was pretty surprised. Oh wait, that's the wrong way around. It probably doesn't matter to be honest, but... Right. That's one, that says 184. It's got K there, so I'm guessing that's 184 kilohertz. And when I was checking the program counter, um, it was, I'll just, I'll just, yeah, let me see if I can, see, there's the program counter. You can just about see the multimeter still. Uh, if I test the outputs on it, whatever they are, I think it's these ones. Oops, sorry, no, wait. So you get 470 hertz there. Next one, oh, that was the same one. 952 hertz, 1.9 kilohertz, 3.8 kilohertz, all the way down to I'm sorry, uh, 60 kilohertz. So, yes, that's interesting, I think. Um, so I'm not sure what to, what to think of that. I've got a lot more speed than I thought I did, and that's that's its working speed. Uh, yeah, so that's interesting. I don't know what I can, how that was useful, but it's a lot faster than I think it was. Um, so yeah, that's all I've got to show for today. Thank you for watching, and see you later.